What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sarah Makers and today we are going to look at three different types of pesky crimp rings on PEX fittings and how to remove them. So if you are getting into a PEX project where you are repairing, remodeling, adding on to, or that crimp just went in the wrong place and didn't quite do its job, we're going to take a look at how to remove those so that you can get a new one on, add on, repair, whatever, and keep going with your PEX project. So we are going to look at the three types of fittings. We're going to look at some proprietary tools that are designed specifically for removing the different types of crimps. And we're going to look at some typical tools that you might have, or a lot of people would probably have, that will do the job almost just as well. So let's get to it. So one of the first types of fittings that you may run into with a crimp on it is a Propex type fitting. Basically what it looks like is your PEX tubing with another small, slightly larger diameter piece of PEX over the top of it. This is a Propex fitting, and this is not something that a typical homeowner, do-it-yourselfer, or even general remodeler, handyman will use. The reason for that is that the tools that make these fittings or um, allow you to use this type of fitting are rather expensive. The less expensive ones are several hundred dollars. Usually they're battery powered. They do have some manual ones, but still they're pretty expensive. These basically are a plastic tube and it always wants to be at approximately the same size as when it was manufactured. So the tool goes inside the fitting, inside this uh, sleeve, and it expands it and stretches it out. You stick the pipe and the sleeve over the pipe and the fitting together and it starts to shrink back down and tries to pull itself back to its original size, thus creating the uh, compression joint and sealing the fitting. This is, like I said, not something that the typical homeowner is going to use just because it's so spendy, but you'll probably run into it if you are tying into an existing system where a plumber that's doing hundreds of these fittings every day has that tool. These are a little bit less expensive, so the cost of the tool weighs off, balances out with the cost of the fittings over time. So we'll look at that. Honestly, that's probably one of the easiest types of fittings to remove, but we'll take a look at that in a second. The next type, and this is kind of my sample manifold. I cut this out on a repair. This has the Propex fitting on one side, then we get into these stainless steel crimps. And basically it's a stainless steel ring that's, it's a strip of metal that's got some uh, punches on it that hold it in a ring form. And then it's got a nub on the side that you crimp and that pulls it together and creates the compression. These are typically the most challenging to remove because it is stainless steel and it's not intuitive really on how to remove it. So there is a specialty tool for this. It doesn't work that great in my opinion, but there are some other ways to do it with just regular tools at home. And then the final is just this copper crimp ring. This is a solid copper ring and it just gets mashed onto the fitting with a pair of pliers that are calibrated so it doesn't over compress them and doesn't under compress them. So this one also, there's a proprietary tool that works really well and also you can do it with um, some homemade tools or home accessible tools. So we'll take a look at each one and uh, show you how to do it. So this first type of fitting, the Propex, this is, like I said, the most basic, easiest fitting to remove. You pretty much don't need any proprietary special tool to remove it. Something as simple as one of these little miniature hacksaws, a regular hacksaw, a little hand hacksaw, or a full-size hacksaw works. The only thing I would recommend is don't get a hacksaw with really, really fine teeth on it because this is plastic, it's soft. You want enough space in between each tooth to actually give you um, a spot for all the plastic to cut into. If the teeth are too small, the plastic binds up and it doesn't clear it very well. So this is a tool that I use quite a bit in plumbing for cutting closet bolts on toilets and things like that. But we can also use a hacksaw. It also depends on how much room you have around the fitting. So what I would typically do is I would cut at an angle to the fitting. I wouldn't cut square with it. You could though, I guess, but I typically liked cutting at a little bit of an angle. And so you just basically start into it. Try not 
have to cut my hand off. Once you think you're pretty well through, I like just a screwdriver. Stick it in there and start twisting it. And I don't think I'm quite through all the way. Just a little bit more. Let's see if that did it. There we go. So it just splits apart like that. You can pull it off. So there's your fitting there. Now with the pipe on the fitting, this gets a little tricky because it is a very tight fit. It doesn't want to come off easily. Typically, you would cut the tubing right next to the fitting. We could do that with the hacksaw or a simple pair of like PVC pipe cutters. These work really well. It's just a regular old blade. Stick it on there. Depending on if it's a brass or a plastic fitting, either one you don't want to cut into the fitting. So if it's a translucent tube like this, I can see where the end of the fitting is and I can avoid cutting it and messing up my cutters. If it's a solid plastic, like a blue or a white or a red type of tubing, and I can't see that fitting, I'll start a little bit further back and kind of work my way in and look inside the tubing and say, okay, I've got another eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, whatever. So once it's cut off like this, then we can cut. Now the thing to note on this portion is that we don't want to cut into the fitting itself. That's something that we do not want to do. We'll create a groove in the um, fins around the fitting and potentially not be able to adapt a new pipe on without having a leak. So this is where it does take a little bit of finesse. You cut, you check. Once you get started, you know, this will this will take a little bit more work to pry it apart and get it off your fitting. And let's see how we did. Still hanging on just a little bit. There we go. So I think I did pretty well. There's just a little bit of a line right there, but that's not one of the primary sealing areas. So if you cut through one of these fins here, you'd want to avoid that. Possibly reuse the, or change out the fitting, use a new fitting. So that's the Propex. For these stainless steel crimp rings, they come in multiple sizes. Here's a half inch, here's a three quarter inch. These are, like I said, a little bit more challenging. If you look at how the fitting actually goes together. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's basically got stamped pieces that create um, tabs that lock the ring together. There, you can kind of see in there. These are what hold the ring together when the actual fitting is crimped around the pipe or the tubing. And that keeps it from splitting open because after all, it's just a single loop of metal. It's not a, an actual fused ring or a piece of tubing. So, here's a manifold that I got. It was for a radiant floor system that I had to change out. As you can see, it's got a lot of corrosion on it. And at every single one of these fittings, it's got a large amount of corrosion. So I replaced the manifold. Um, there is a proprietary tool that's sold at Home Depot. This one basically, it's it's pretty simple. It's just like a big Allen wrench almost. 
but it's got this fitting on the end that has a cutout that is designed to slide over that crimped piece. And then all you do is you rotate it and it breaks that fitting apart. And then you can remove that crimp ring. Let's see, pliers. Obviously, these can be a little sharp when you're done because you're tearing stainless steel, bending it. So you just pull it off like so, and you're done. Now, the thing about this particular tool is it comes in a package and you get a second head for it, which is designed to go onto a socket wrench. This happens to be a 3 8 inch socket wrench, but they tell you that it works for a half inch socket wrench. So they're a little bit off there. They also say that this system works for half inch, or actually, sorry, I believe it goes down to 3 8 inch all the way up to one inch. These are half inch fittings and it does fit on them. And you can use either the socket wrench or this handle here. But honestly, for the single piece of metal, that's all you need. And they charge 30 bucks for these two heads and this L handle. So I wouldn't say it's a really good deal. I probably wouldn't purchase it if I was looking for one. And here's where the drawback comes. This is a three quarter inch fitting. This is a one inch fitting. It doesn't fit on a three quarter inch fitting and it doesn't fit on a one inch fitting. Now maybe the fact that you got two heads, one of these is supposed to be a larger size and the other was smaller. That might be the case, but I got two of the same size ones. So not the best deal in my opinion. And they only work kind of Okay, not the greatest. As far as optional ways to remove it, some nail pictures, a screwdriver, maybe an old, old chisel that you don't mind possibly nicking up. Some lineman pliers or heavy pliers would work. On this one here, this is a one inch. I'm going to take these nail pinchers. I'm just going to mess around with it and see if I can get it to come off. There, there we go. That worked really quick. So all I did is I managed to get the pinchers on there and grab the tab on the end and just pop it past that little dog that locks it together and it was done. So I would say I'd rather buy a pair of these for probably right around the same price as this thing. You'd use this a lot more too. So that would be how you do that. Then again, say this tubing, I can't quite see where the fitting is. I don't want to mess my cutters up. I cut a little long. I can look in there. I can say, okay, I need to come back to about here. Cut again, right at the edge of the fitting. So that was a pretty good cut there. Um, I would probably take my little mini hacksaw and cut a little bit of a spiral cut on this tubing because as you can see I can get right up against the fitting here see if we can pop it yet nope not yet felt like I just touched the brass fitting there, or copper. I'm not sure what type of fitting it is. Just starting to open up there. I just kind of keep working it along like that. There we go.
And there the tubing's off. We have a fitting that in this case is not quite the greatest, but um, actually looks like it got mashed on one side. It's flattened out, which might be why there's a lot of corrosion on the inside ring. Because I don't believe I mashed that when I was doing it. Yeah. So, there's how you would remove a stainless steel tubing ring. Now the final and probably, in my opinion, the easiest PEX ring to remove is this copper ring. And these are really simple with the right tool, and this one I would recommend buying. I would cut the tubing just shy of the fitting. There I've got a little bit of extra room, so I'll probably... I'll see about cutting off just a little bit more right about there. And then this particular tool here, again, it's a proprietary tool. This is all it does, but this one's actually really good in my opinion. So it's got a round, we'll call it an anvil and a cutting blade. And you basically take that anvil, stick it inside the fitting. And as you squeeze down on this cutting blade, it will cut the ring, just dent the tubing but nothing more than that. And then you take it, you turn your tubing just a little bit, and you squeeze it a few times. And as you squeeze it, it crimps the copper ring in different locations and opens it up and allows it to basically just fall off the tubing. In this case, I can get enough of the tubing hanging off the edge, if I don't cut myself on that. Um, Sometimes you can take your pliers and pull the pipe off the fitting. Other times, again, you'll need to cut it. I like to get cut the tubing in a little bit of a spiral. Again, you can get fairly close to the fitting, and it gives you a point where you can get a pair of pliers on it and kind of peel it and roll it off the tubing. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. We looked at the Propex plastic crimps, the stainless steel crimps, and the copper crimps. This is just kind of an informative video. It shows you how to remove those pesky crimp rings. Like I said, if you're doing a repair, remodel, tying into a system. Um, sometimes when you're getting ready to crimp down a fitting, the crimp takes place and the fitting slides and actually occurs in the wrong place. And now you've got a crimp ring not on the fitting. Um, so this is how you fix those issues. Like I said, we've got a couple of proprietary tools, some really good, some eh, not so good. And then basically, you know, household tools that a lot of people might have something the equivalent of. Do you have to use exactly these tools, you know, these end nippers, this screwdriver, this tubing cutter, um, this hacksaw? No, not necessarily. A lot of different versions of these general tools will work. But that gets you through that uh-oh kind of moment where now what? It's in the wrong spot. I got all the fittings and everything and I got the crimper and I got to remove that crimp for some reason. So you're not stuck if you do have to remove one and you don't have the specialty tools. It's actually pretty simple once you know how to attack each one. So this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Until next time. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. Those things are all great for us. And until next time, get out there and do something.